the 2024 NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament is finally here. And here's everything that you need to know about the tournament before the games begin. What is up awesome people of the internet? March Madness is here. So let's go over the dates, times, questions, and everything else that you were probably wondering about March Madness. And we start with the major dates. So the first four games start on March the 20th and, and it's the 20th and 21st. The first round is going from March the 22nd through the 23rd. Second round is March 24th through the 25th. Sweet 16 uh, is from March the 29th through the 30th. Elite 8 is March the 31st through the, through the 1st of April. And then the final four is on Friday, April the 5th. And then we have the, the crown jewel of it all, the NCAA championship game, which takes place on April the 7th, which is on a Sunday. All right, so those are the dates that you all need to know. And uh, let's get into some of the frequently asked questions that I've been seeing people all over the internet talk about. So the first question I'm seeing a lot is, what is the first four and why does it exist? Well, the first four are the first four games that are played before the first round of the tournament. Uh, it's basically like a, like a play-in of sorts um, where there's technically 68 teams that are allowed in the NCAA tournament, but eight of those teams have to battle against each other so that number can move down to 64 because it's actually 64 teams that actually are competing in that first round. Um, so in order to get to that 64 number, the first uh, the first four games are played in advance of that. Again, it's sort of like a play-in uh, kind, kind of thing where, where the eight teams that are sort of on the bubble, they have a chance to compete against each other to see what four teams actually make it to the first round. Uh, the first four has been a thing in the men's game for a long while uh, because they've, they've been at 68 teams for, for, for quite a bit. For the women's side, uh, this was actually this actually became a thing in 2021 when the NCAA expanded the women's tournament to 68 teams. This year, the first four games uh, feature eight squads, including Sacred Heart versus Presbyterian. Now, Sacred Heart received an automatic bid into the tournament because they won the NEC tournament. Uh, they finished off the season on a 15-game winning streak with a season record of 24 and nine. Sacred Heart will play Presbyterian who come into the tournament also as an automatic bid for winning the Big South. Uh, th this season for Presbyterian, they've been pretty good. They had a record of 20 and 14 overall, which marks the most wins in program history. And this will be their first time in the NCAA tournament as a D1 school. So shout out to Presbyterian. Sacred Heart plays Presbyterian on March the 20th at 7 p.m. in Columbia. Now, uh, this game will be on ESPNU. Next up, we have Holy Cross versus UT Martin. Now, the Holy Cross Crusaders, I love that name, uh, they are back in the NCAA tournament due to them winning their tournament, their conference tournament. Uh, they are 20 and 12 on the season and are headed into their 14th NCAA tournament tournament in school history. They play the UT Martin Skyhawks, uh, who is one of the teams that actually got into the tournament kind of on a technicality of sorts. Uh, they lost to uh, they lost their conference tournament to Southern Indiana, but here's the deal. Southern Indiana is not eligible for the NCAA tournament because they are still in the process of reclassifying as a D1 school. There's there's a, a whole process that you have to go through to get reclassified, and um, that involves you not being eligible for certain stuff, depending on where you are in that process. Um, so Southern Indiana will be participating in the WNIT. However, they do not qualify for the NCAA tournament. So uh, because they were the winners of the conference tournament and they played um, they played UT Martin. UT Martin gets the benefit of making it to the NCAA tournament, even though they technically did not win their uh, conference tournament. So, you know, 
Hey, Southern Indiana's loss is UT Martin's gain, and we will see what they can do in the tournament. Uh, this game is on March the 21st in, in, in Iowa City, and that game is at 9 p.m. on ESPN2. And a thing to note, all the times that I'm saying in this video is going to be Eastern time. I know a lot of times I talk about Central time because that is where I am at. However, I do know um, that most people in America, at least, are very, very used to hearing Eastern time said, and they can use that to, to determine when it actually will be on air um, when you know in their time zone. So I will say Eastern time for the remainder of this, uh, this video. Next up, we have what I consider a huge game between Auburn and Arizona. Now, both of these teams narrowly made it to the tournament with Auburn's win over LSU earlier this season really being the thing that solidified their spot in the NCAA tournament. Auburn is building something very, very special, and they are 22-11 and 11 on the season, which is their best season in over four years. And they are finally back to the NCAA tournament. Now, for Arizona, Arizona is a team that has been through it all season. Uh, they have just seven scholarship players remaining on the roster uh, due to uh, five players being gone. Three of them uh, were injury, uh, are out for the re remainder of the season due to injury, and two of them left the program, including, most notably, their best player in Kalen Gilbert. Uh, even with all of that, and even a call for walk-ons to join the program, Arizona has still done enough to get a spot in the NCAA tournament. Uh, they are battle-tested from the Pac-12, and I wouldn't be surprised if they, get, if they get an upset in this tournament. But at first, they have to make it through the first four. Now, Auburn versus Arizona, is that game is going to be on March the 21st at 7 p.m. on ESPN2, and this game is taking place in stores. And finally, the final first four game is between Vanderbilt and Columbia. All right, so Vandy is 22-9 and nine on the season and overall has improved dramatically over the past few years, winning more SEC games this year than they have since 2012. And also, they have made the NCAA tournament, which is something that they have not done since 2014. And they're facing Columbia, who are 23 and 6 on the season. And they are a program that I really didn't think was going to actually make the NCAA tournament. They they made it by the skin of their teeth, uh, entering the tournament for the first time ever. Columbia's coach had something to say about um, SEC schools when when she was sort of making an argument for her team uh, getting into the NCAA tournament. And so it's interesting that uh, that Columbia now has to face an SEC squad that. Um, has a worse record than Columbia does. So it should be really, really fun to watch this game and see who comes out on top. Uh, but don't don't sleep on don't sleep on Columbia. That's all I got to say. Don't sleep on Columbia. Uh, Vandy will play Columbia on March the 20th at 9 p.m. on ESPNU, and that game is in Blacksburg. All right, so that was a little bit of context about the first, first four games that, again, happens right before the first round starts. And another question that I am seeing pop up a lot is about those host sites and who determines where games are played. Well, the NCAA uh, has tournament games taking place in the following locations. Uh, the top 16 host sites, Albany, New York, Portland, Oregon, and Cleveland, Ohio. Now, uh, for the host sites, rankings matter. And the benefit that the top 16 teams get is that they're able to host the first round of the NCAA tournament, uh, the first two rounds, I should say, of the NCAA tournament. Now, this is different than the men's uh, tournament and the way that host sites work and, and, and all that good stuff. Now, to give you all a better sense of what this actually means in reality, um, I do want to just show each each regional so you can really see uh, the, the, the tangible benefit that these teams get from being, um, you know, in that top 16, which means the top four teams uh, in each regional, Albany 1, Albany 2, Portland 3, and Portland 4. Now, for Albany 1, the top four teams include South Carolina, Indiana, Oregon State, and Notre Dame, who all hold the first two rounds at their home court, which is just an overall huge advantage uh, for fan support, for uh, monetary uh, funds for the school, and just for overall team momentum. All right, so staying in 
the Albany one regional. And let's just go through the different games for round one. And we have North Carolina that will take on Michigan State. Uh, North Carolina is 19 and 12 on the season. Michigan State is 22 and 8 on the season. Uh, this game is going to be ha going to happen on the 22nd at 11:30 a.m. on ESPN2. Uh, this game will be followed by uh, South Carolina versus either Sacred Heart or Presbyterian. As we all know, South Carolina is 32 and 0 on the season. And again, this game is happening at 2 p.m. on ESPN on um, March the 22nd. And that those games are happening in Columbia. So Columbia, South Carolina, that is. Uh, so after that first round of games um, that happened on the 22nd, uh, we then, as we head over to, to the second round um, of games that will happen on March the 24th, those games will also be in Columbia. So you can see like the bracket here, uh, regardless of, of who wins that second game, will be in Columbia uh, for for this particular um, this particular host site. And moving over to Bloomington, which is where Indiana resides. Indiana starts starts it off on the 23rd playing Fairfield. So Indiana is 24 and five on the season. Fairfield is 31 and one. And uh, we see that this game is going to be at 1.30 on ESPN2. That game will be followed by Oklahoma, which is 22 and nine on the season, playing Florida Gulf Coast, which is 29 and four on the season. This game is at 4 p.m. on ESPN News. All right, now going west to Corvallis, we see Oregon State playing Eastern Washington. Oregon State is 24 and seven on the season and Eastern Washington is 29 and five. This game is at 8 p.m. on ESPNU. Uh, we, that then is followed by Texas, uh, a, Texas A&M versus Nebraska. Texas A&M is 19 and 12 on the season. Nebraska is 22 and 11. That game is at 10.30 p.m. on ESPNU. Again, both of those games are happening on March the 22nd. And finally, for Albany 1, we have uh, Notre Dame hosting. And Notre Dame takes on Kent State on the 23rd at 2.15 p.m. on ESPN. Uh, Notre Dame has a record of 26-6 and six on the season. And Kent State has a record of 21-10. and 10. Uh, that, that game is then followed by Ole Miss versus Marquette. Ole Miss is 23-8 and eight on the season. And Marquette is also 23-8 and eight on the season. This game is at 445 on ESPNU. Now, those were the games in Albany 1, um, at least for the first round. And then we'll see who actually is able to win those games and move on to the second round. All right, now going over to Albany 2, we have the top dogs, Iowa, Kansas State, LSU, and UCLA all hosting those, those first two rounds. And if you are looking to buy those Iowa City tickets, you are way, way, way too late. Tickets sold out for the first two games in less than 30 minutes. So resale, it is. All right, so for Iowa City, Iowa kicks it off um, versus Holy Cross or UT Martin, whichever one wins those first four games. That, the, that game is going to be on uh, March the 23rd at 3 p.m. on ABC. All other games are either on ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, or ESPNU. Now for the women's tournament, this is one of two games that are going to be in the first round on ABC. The Caitlin Clark effect at work. All right, um, Iowa is 29 and four on the season, um, and and we will see who exactly they they face, whether it's Holy Cross or UT Martin. Again, this game is on ABC at 3:30 p.m. All right, and that game will be followed by West Virginia going against Princeton. Uh, West Virginia is 24 and seven on the season, and Princeton is 25 and four. Uh, that game is at 5:30 p.m. on ESPN two. All right, going down to Manhattan, Kansas, we see Kansas State uh, going to take on Portland. That game is at is on the 22nd of March, and that game is at 4.30 p.m. on ESPN News. Uh, Kansas State is 25-7 and seven on the season, and Portland is 21-12. and 12. That game will be followed by Colorado versus Drake. Colorado is 22-9 and nine on the season. Drake is 29-5. and five. This game is going to be on at 7 p.m. on ESPN News. 
All right, heading down to uh, Baton Rouge, we will see LSU take on Rice. LSU is 28-5 and five on the season, and Rice is 19-14 and 14 on the season. Uh, this game is on the 22nd at 4 p.m. on ESPN. Um, right before that game, we will see Louisville take on Middle Tennessee. Louisville is 24-9 and nine on the season, and Middle Tennessee is 29-4 and four on the season as well. Middle Tennessee has beaten... Louisville in the past, so we will see what happens in this game. Um, this game is at 1.30 p.m. on ESPN2, and, and those four games, will, will uh, those two games will take place all in Baton Rouge. All right, moving on west to Los Angeles, we see UCLA uh, taking on California Baptist. Now, this game is going to be at 9.00. 30 p.m. on the 23rd. Yes, again, I did say 9.30 p.m. on March the 23rd. Uh, that game will be on ESPN2. We will also see right before that Creighton take on UNLV. Creighton is 25-5 and five on the season, and UNLV is 30-2. and two. Um, That game is going to be at 7 p.m. on ESPN News. All right, so moving on down to Portland 3. We got Southern California, Virginia Tech, UConn, and Ohio State all hosting. All right, and let's continue in Los Angeles at USC, where Southern California will take on Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Uh, Southern California is 26-5 and five on the season, and Corpus Christi is 23-8 and eight on the season. That game will be at 4.30 p.m. on ESPN. Uh, we will also see Kansas take on Michigan. Kansas is 19 and 12 on the season. Michigan is 20 and 13 on the season. That game is at 2 p.m. on ESPN News. Both of those games are happening on the 23rd of March. All right, and then going over east to Blacksburg, Virginia, we see Virginia Tech take on Marshall. That game is at um, is on the 22nd at 3:30 p.m. on ESPN Two. Virginia Tech is 24 and 7 on the season and Marshall is 26 and 6. We also see a Baylor take on either Vanderbilt or Columbia. That game will be at um, 6 p.m. on ESPN2 on the 22nd. All right, now moving on to Stores, Connecticut. We have UConn facing Jackson State at 1 p.m. on ABC on the 23rd and again this is the second game that is on ABC. We, we will have the Iowa game on ABC. We will have this UConn game on ABC. Again, 1 p.m. on ABC on the 23rd. UConn is 29-5 and five on the season. And Jackson State is 26-6 and six on the season. We then have Syracuse take on either Auburn or Arizona. Now, this game is going to be at uh, following that, that UConn game at 3.30 p.m. on ESPN2. All right, moving to Columbus, Ohio. We have Ohio State taking on Maine on March 22nd at 12 p.m. on ESPN. Uh, Ohio State is 25 and 5 on the season, and Maine is 24 and 9. We will also see Duke take on Richmond. Duke is 20 and 11 on the season, and Richmond is 29 and 5 on the season. Uh, this game is at 2:30 p.m. on ESPN News again on the 22nd. And for Portland 4, we have Texas, Gonzaga, NC State, and Stanford all hosting. And uh, those first-round games include Texas taking on Drexel. Uh, Texas is 30-4 and four on the season, and Drexel is 19-14. and 14. Um, This game is on the 22nd at 3 p.m. on ESPNU. We then have Alabama taking on Florida State. Alabama is 20, 23 and, and 9 on the season, and Florida State is 23 and 10 on the season. Um, uh, this game is at, at 5.30 p.m. on ESPN2, again on the 22nd of March. We then move on down to Spokane, uh, where Gonzaga will play UC Irvine. Gonzaga is 30 and 3 on the season, and UC Irvine is 23 and 8. This game is on March 23rd at 7.30 p.m. on ESPN2. We will also see, right after that, Utah take on South Dakota State. Uh, Utah is 22-10 20, and 10 on the season, and South Dakota State is 27-5. and 5. 
Uh, this game will take place at 10 p.m. on ESPNU on March 23rd. All right, continuing on, we head on down to Raleigh where we will see NC State taking on Chattanooga. NC State is 27 and 6 on the season, and Chattanooga is 28 and 4. This game is going to be on March 23rd at 2.30 p.m. on ESPNU. Right before that game, we will see Tennessee take on Green Bay. Tennessee is 19 and 12 on the season, and Green Bay is 27 and 6 on the season. Uh, this game is at 12 p.m. on ESPN. All right, and rounding out the, the rest of the 64 first round um, matchups, we will see Stanford take on Norfolk State. Uh, Stanford is 28 and 5 on the season, and Norfolk State is 27 and 5. This game is at 10 p.m. Again, I said 10 p.m. on ESPN2. And again, this is on March the 22nd. Y'all, we got to love the, the West Coast times. 10 p.m. So, y'all, we're going to be staying up real late to watch these games. Um, and then we also finally have Iowa State versus Maryland. Um, Iowa State is 20 and 11 on the season. And Maryland is 19 and 13 on the season. Uh, this game, again, is on the 22nd at 7.30 p.m. on ESPN2. Whew. So those were all the first round games. So after the first two uh, first round games is over, then the winners of that will make it to the second round and then the teams will play each other. Um, we'll find out who is going to make it. So the field will go from 64 for the first round, 32 for the second round, then on to the Sweet 16 where the matchups move to one of two locations, either Albany um, or Portland. So Albany one and Albany two teams that make it to the Sweet 16, will play at MVP Arena in Albany, New York, and uh, for Portland 3 and Portland 4. And those teams that make it will play at the Moda Center in Portland, Oregon. Hence why the regionals are called what they are. Now, a thing to note is that these two sites are not just the host for the Sweet 16, but it is, it is also the host for the Elite 8 as well. And then as we dwindle down to the final four, we get a new location change, uh, which is the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, this is not just the location of the final four, but the location of the championship game as well. Now, if you guys are curious, uh, we do know a next year's women's final four location, which will be in Tampa, Florida. Now, if you all are wondering who determines these locations, well, it's the, it's the committee. It is the NCAA uh, Women's Basketball Committee that determines the, those locations. If you want to know who those people are, we are actually going to get to that in just a sec. So just keep on watching. All right. All right. And if you guys are enjoying this video so far, if y'all could hit that like button, that would be absolutely fantastic. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, another question that I am seeing is how much rest are these players actually getting between games? Well, let's kind of break that down. So for the first two rounds, teams get one day of rest between games. Uh, teams that are traveling after the second round to the Sweet 16, they have four days off uh, between um, se the second round and the Sweet 16. So that is a decent amount of stretch. And there is another one day off between Sweet 16 and Elite 8 games. And then for the Final Four, that does require more traveling because change in location. Uh, so there is going to be a four day break in between elite eight and final four. And then we have a two day break between the final four and the championship game. So yes, there are going to be a lot of games in a short period of time, but overall it is a whole lot better than what some of these teams had to go through in their conference tournaments. All right. Finally, I am seeing a question about who determines these selections? Who is in the selection committee for women's basketball? Well, the selection committee is made up of 12 people from all across the country. Lisa Peterson is the chair of the committee. Uh, she also holds the role of senior associate commissioner for sports management of the PAC 12. Now here's, here's some of the other, other, uh, other people who have a role in the committee as well. So you can see the list of, of, of those names right here. Um, you see folks are from all around the country, right? So um, from the University of Arkansas, um, from Northwestern,
from St. Joseph's, from San Diego State, from Milwaukee, uh, from Central Michigan, from Western Cal uh, Carolina, um, from Louisville, uh, from Kansas State, from Villanova. There are so many um, conferences and uh, regions that are represented in the list of 12. So yeah, for those who are wondering, this is the list. These are the people who are determining who makes it to the NCAA tournament and who doesn't. Also, they're determining other things like like rule changes. They're they're determining things like um, like uh, locations for the the future Final Fours and whatnot. So so this team, this group of twelve people, uh, really do have a lot of power for women's basketball. So yeah, if you were curious, now you know who is uh, making those decisions. All right, so those are the core things that you all needed to know about the NCAA tournament based off of the questions that I've seen you all post um, in, in one, one here on YouTube and also just everywhere else when women's basketball is being talked about. Now, this isn't everything there is to know about the NCAA tournament. There is a whole, whole host of storylines, potential upsets, history, and more that we are going to be getting into as the, get, the days continue to move forward. So when you subscribe to this channel, you will be notified each time I post one of those videos. Again, I will be posting just about every single day. So make sure to check here every day for the latest news on women's basketball. In particular, what is happening for women's March Madness. All right, so, so that is the video, guys. I do appreciate y'all so, so much for making it to the end of it. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. Also, if you have not joined the awesome people of the internet bracket challenge, what are you waiting for? The time is now to join that challenge. Enter your, your, your thoughts about potential upsets and all that good stuff, and we will see who wins in the end. Uh, the, pinned, uh, the link will be pinned in the comments below. It is free to join, and uh, let's get it. All right, so that is the video, guys. Again, I really do appreciate y'all for rocking with me. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to hit that like button. Until next time, guys. Bye.